In the shadow of Mount St. Helens lies a canyon where a series of strange encounters have emerged over the past century. The first of these claims surfaced when a group of five seasoned miners headed out to the area on a seemingly routine expedition in search of gold. But what they found instead was something that none of the men could have ever anticipated. It's July 1924, and the team is working their promising gold claim with high hopes of striking it rich. And among the men was Fred Beck, who early on in the trip complained of a toothache. It was a long hike back, so he asked the most experienced woodsman in the group, Hank, if he would take him into town to see a dentist. But Hank refused to leave and replied, Neither God nor the devil could get me away from here. And so the mining trip continued, with the men panning for gold day in and day out taking refuge at night in their sturdy log cabin. Things were going smoothly. That is until one night when they heard strange whistling sounds echoing across the canyon. Although the men were accustomed to hearing noises at night, something about this sound was notably disturbing. Then, the following evening, they heard yet another unfamiliar sound, as if something was loudly thumping its chest. And pretty soon, they all had an eerie sense that someone or something was watching them. This put the men on edge. Even Hank, who knew the land better than anyone, was becoming anxious. When they first arrived at the camp, he had noticed several large footprints scattered around the area, the likes of which he had never seen. Back then, he thought nothing of it. Perhaps it was a bear. But now he was beginning to think it was something else entirely. The next day, Hank and Fred went to get water from a nearby spring and brought along their rifles just in case. And it was there that Hank saw something lurking in the shadows about a hundred yards away. He yelled to Fred, who turned just in time to see a huge, seven-foot, hairy man-beast. Hank raised his rifle and fired off three shots, hitting a tree and spraying bark in all directions. The astonished Fred fired off several more shots, but the creature had turned and fled. When the shaken men returned to the cabin, they told the others of their terrifying encounter. We gotta get out of here. There's some sort of mountain devil out there. You sound like a madman. Ain't no such thing as mountain devils. Yes, there is. I saw it, and I shot my rifle at it, too. Hank and Fred eventually convinced the men to go, but now the sun was setting, and their last chance to leave had already passed. And so the men would have to wait until first light. All they had to do was make it through the night. And so they hunkered down and drifted off to sleep with their rifles in hand. Morning couldn't come soon enough. It was around midnight when a loud thud awoke the men. Something hit the cabin. Fred saw Hank kicking and screaming and tried to calm him down. Quiet, quiet, be quiet. They heard heavy footsteps trampling through the brush right outside the cabin. Whatever it was, it was huge and there was more than one. The men readied their rifles and then it began. throwing rocks. And that's when the cabin began to shake, and a thunderous barrage of boulders rained down upon them. The hysterical men fired at the roof, the walls, the doors, until suddenly everything went quiet. Hold your fire! The men looked at each other. Was the siege over? Maybe if we stop firing, they'll leave us alone. Hank squinted through a gap in the logs and saw several shadowy ape-like creatures passing by. He turned back to the group. I think they might be leaving. Suddenly, a large hairy arm reached inside and grabbed hold of an axe. Fred tried to wrestle it out of his clutches. Hank fired his gun. The creature released its grip and pulled its arm back out. The terrified men tried to regain their composure. But as soon as the arm withdrew, another assault began. The cabin began to shake violently, as if the creatures were trying to knock it down. The men wedged a post against the door, trying to secure it. Hank screamed incessantly and wildly fired his gun. For God, you mountain devils! The entire night would go from a fierce battle to complete silence, over and over again. Fred and Hank led the charge, while the other men cowered in the corner. But as they waited for the next attack, Hank began to sing. If you leave us alone, we'll leave you alone. If you leave us alone, we'll leave you alone. And we'll all go home in the morning. And we'll all go home in the morning. 
The night seemed endless, but soon, through the veil of smoke, Fred noticed a glint of light. Was it morning already? A welcome sense of relief swept over the men. The creatures had left. The attack was over. Somehow, they had made it through the night. The men grabbed only their essential items and cautiously exited the cabin with their guns drawn. Once outside, Fred spotted one of the monsters on a nearby ridge. He fired, hitting the creature who toppled into the gorge. Better them than us. The men made their way out of the canyon and headed towards the nearest ranger station. Fred urged everyone to keep their ordeal a secret for fear of ridicule. But upon their arrival, Hank couldn't help himself and described their bizarre encounter to the ranger. Word quickly spread, leading to the great ape hunt of 1924, where people from all over swarmed into the canyon in hopes of catching a glimpse or perhaps even taking down one of the creatures. But their search was in vain, and no solid evidence was ever found. After the encounter, the area was renamed Ape Canyon, and Fred Beck would go on to tell the story of that night where he and four of his friends would be attacked by a pack of menacing beasts that some say may still be out there today.